when we're looking at the, the HRT, is there, you know, is there different ways? I know that you can be doing it topically, whether it's on your skin, you can be doing it vaginally. So what are those different ways that they can be utilizing the HRT? Yeah. And I think that that, that's, that concern of I'm going to mess things up is really common, but you're like, you're already messed up. Like you're already low, right? Like you were extremely low. You're not making anything like this. Let's just like give you the support that you need. So like, you should feel great your whole life. Why not? Why not do it? You know, like you shouldn't suffer. And like, you know, um, the, we are not messing stuff up because you were not suppressing LH in the brain with hormone replacement therapy. None of the um, options out there are doing that. You have to get really high levels of hormones to suppress that. And that means that women can still get pregnant, for example. They're not, I think that's, there's this misconception that if I start hormone replacement therapy, that I'm going to make myself infertile or that I'm not going to, you know, that I've somehow stopping this ovulation or this part of the brain that's like making me cycle. And they don't want to stop cycling because they're only 38 or they're 35 or, you know, they're young, even younger, 25 year olds certainly want, haven't even had kids yet. Right. So I think if women understood that we're not stopping that ovulation, we're not interrupting it. We're just supporting, we're just supplementing or enriching that so that all these bad chemicals will stop binding to your estrogen receptor for starters. And then you can sleep, you know what I mean? Like you do all these other things too. Um, and heal like it. So that would help with women understood that we're not like, you can, you can even start it and stop it. You can start it and get pregnant and start it again after pregnancy. I mean, this can be like, as a, again, a, more of a supplement than anything. And there, there's, there are better ways to take it. There is actually like, so when you talk about hormones, when you swallow them, they have a very low bioavailability. And you guys know about like liver totally breaks everything up 80% of it's like gone and talk about more of sexism in medicine. We, we give women oral progesterone all the time because it's a great sleeping pill. It's actually just like a more of a cop out like here, just take oral progesterone and make you fall asleep when it's actually not replacing her progesterone levels to what they need to be. We're just simply giving her another symptom management here. Here's it's like a sleeping pill. And so that's always bothered me about that. And I've taken it myself, you know, and it really makes you fall asleep really fast. So, um, but it is not the most effective because you, it ends up making a lot of side effects, bloating, irritability, um, weight gain, and grogginess. And women don't really feel like themselves. They feel kind of sleepy the next day. And we don't want, you don't want to walk around sleepy. We're not trying to suppress women or subdue them. We have to make them feel better. And so uh, bioavailability in hormones is huge, right? And if you try to put it through the skin, it's the same thing. Progesterone only has like a 20% bioavailability. So some women feel better when they put progesterone on the skin. There's like yam creams on the market. There's a lot of stuff that you can put through the skin. And they feel better initially. They actually feel like they might be more calm or they can sleep or they feel a little bit better. Can you imagine if they, how they would feel if they had something that had 80 or 90 or 100% bioavailability? even better. So like these women are getting some relief with oral progesterone. They're getting some relief with um, topicals. Can you imagine a product? Well, and there is a product, right? So that's what we sell. Like we sell one, like, and it's vaginal. And so women, if they knew how powerful drug delivery and hormone delivery through vaginal wall is, they would be excited. This is really like a benefit that we have over men, maybe one of the... <laughs> But like men have to inject testosterone to get their bioavailability up, right? They inject it uh, twice a week or sometimes once a week. Women, vaginal, like the mucosa is so you can diffuse right through it, goes right into the bloodstream and it's close to an injection bioavailability. It goes right and you avoid liver metabolism and you get all the metabolites that you need to go to the brain. Virtually everybody notices their mood and sleep and outlook improve within like 10 days. That's how fast it works. For postpartum depression, I mean, you name it, like depression is huge for women. And we're just like handing out antidepressants like crazy. Like this is some kind of, like it's normal. It's wild to me. And and Xanax and anti-anxiety. And women really just need their own natural progesterone. And when you take it vaginally and you insert it vaginally, it diffuses and like they feel amazing really fast and it's natural. And this is like what we should be looking at for women. And it's a vaginal vaginal delivery. I know it's it's so incredible that we don't realize how absorbable the vaginal walls are. I know that's a whole nother topic of like the like the tampons and the things that are going in there, but it, it's such an absorbable area. And the fact that you can be utilizing this for HRT and getting such a high absorption rate and feeling better so quickly is such an incredible thing. You're right. And I didn't even think about that tampon thing. And you're absolutely right. Like we were putting, yeah. So this cream, we, we make it um, with a small amount of cream as possible, talking about that. And then it's, it also, the cream is discharged, right? So we don't want to absorb the cream. It's just to hold the hormones. So we absorb the hormones and then we discharge the cream to try to reduce anything that's being absorbed that way. So that helps. And then also um, 
the contamination risk is a lot lower. So like women are putting creams on their skin, right? This is a really common, they'll get HRT and they'll put estrogen and progesterone and testosterone on their skin. And it gets all over. I don't care what any doc, like any company is saying that it doesn't get on anything and that it's absorbed. It is not. I've worked with clients. They get it on their kids. They get it on their pets. They get it on their husband. They get it in the sheets and the bed sheets. It's all over the house. It's like if with only 20% bioavailability, the rest of it's everywhere. And so um, women are told that this is not a risk, but it absolutely is. And so when you put it vaginally, it's contained right? It's contained. And then you get most of it to absorb. The rest of it can leak out on like a liner. And as long as you wait a few hours in between sexual contact, you're not going to contaminate your partner. And so this is a much better way and safer way for us to deliver it without having to do an injection. The next best thing would be an injection for women, which, we, you know, so I think that in terms of like just being a stewardship and being aware of that, we're have people around us with this hormones too. Um, so vaginal, I have a lot of young clients that have young children, right? These are young moms and picking their kids up. And if you're putting on your yeah, forearm, sure. like it's okay. going right on your even, kid. Even when we would put it between the legs, like, and they try to put, you're still got laundry issues. Like you've still got on the skin and it's not being absorbed all the way. So the vaginal is like really, women can be like at ease that they're not getting it on their children. And I see, I talk to veterinarians too, and it gets all over the pets and they bring their pets in and the vulva gets like huge and the, they're like on their dog. <laughs> it's just, no way. Like, yeah. Gosh. I you never even thought that. about that. Yeah, you wouldn't think about it, but it's like, no. so we need to think about this contamination issue. And we, we don't, I mean, I would never give men a testosterone cream because that would get mm -hmm. all over the house. So why are we giving women cream, hormone cream 